Okay, this is where we left off. I believe it's Roman numeral four in your notes. And if uh, last thing we talked about was successive ionization and removing electrons, this fits right along with that. Let me explain why. Okay, this fits right along with that because you learned yesterday that atoms will give up a certain number of electrons before it becomes very difficult, before they don't, they don't like to do it at all. All right, once you get to that octet, they want to have an octet, right? So they're not going to give up, uh, you know, an infinite number of electrons without trouble. They will give up a couple, sometimes one, sometimes two, sometimes three, depending on where they are in the periodic table, but they will eventually reach a point where they're breaking an octet, and they're not going to want to give up anymore. So I can predict how many electrons a guy will lose based on where he is in the periodic table. I could actually tell you what he wants to do based on that from yesterday. And we're going to use, really, the octet rule is the, uh, is the, is the key to predicting the ionic charge. We're going to use the octet rule. The octet rule, as you remember, I've mentioned it a couple of times since the last chapter when I first introduced it. The octet rule says that atoms tend to be most stable when they have a filled outer shell. And for a lot of atoms, that's an octet. That's eight. For most atoms, that's eight in their outer shell. So the question then becomes, who's the nearest group eight element to the guy I'm trying to predict? Because he'll want to become like him. All right? We're going to try to get the electron configuration of the nearest group eight element. What do we call the group eight elements? Noble gases, right. Okay. So copy all that down, and I will do some examples. Because that's it for the notes, really. What I'm going to spend the rest of my time is doing, like I said, this is like the only thing on the test that would actually be considered, I would say, it could be considered a problem, an actual type of problem, not just a, uh, you know, notes, not just an objective question. It's really relatively easy, too, once you get the hang of it, and I'll show you with a chart what you have to do applying the octet rule. Okay? All right, so copy this chart. Whoa, Nelly, what happened there? No, um, I don't think I want, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, I think I wanted to go this way. Right first. Copy that chart. There you go. All right. It's not necessary you make lines this way. Just have these four columns. The element, the nearest noble gas, the electrons, and the charge. And we'll predict the charge. We're going to predict all this. No. Huh? Well, don't worry about it. I bet. We're going to do it. I'll show it to you. I'll point it out to you. Then you'll know. It's not a problem. Yeah, what's strontium? Don't worry about it. I want to know. It's going to be... We're going to talk about it in a minute. All right. You ready? Take a look. If we look at fluorine, where he is in the periodic table, and I'm going to go back one slide to look at that, okay? Here he is, right? Because I've got that periodic table covered up. You can't see it as well. People, Not everybody can see that one up there. Here's the periodic table, okay? There's fluorine. Who's the nearest noble gas to fluorine? Obviously. Neon, right? Uh, and unlike in the previous, remember when we were doing shorthand notations? You had to take the prior noble gas, right? In this case, I'm just talking about who's the nearest one to it whether he's ahead of them or behind them, it doesn't matter. So fluorine wants to be like neon. Makes sense. Uh, he would do, need what to become like neon? How many electrons would he need? 
one. Everybody agree? You need to gain one electron. You see why? He has how many in his outer shell? He's in group seven. There's group eight, the octet rule. Everybody wants eight. Everybody wants to be like these guys. So he'll want to gain one electron. Everybody agree with that, right? Um, so let's write that down. Fluorine, nearest noble gas was neon. <coughs> right. Nearest noble gas was neon. And to become like neon, what does he have to do? We said gain one electron. Now, if he gains one electron, what charge will he have? It'll have a negative charge, won't it? Because he gained one extra electron. He used to have nine protons and nine electrons. You give him an extra electron, now he's got he's got ten electrons and nine protons. So he will have a negative one charge. By the way, your book, and I think technically it's supposed to be one negative, they write, but I, I, I almost always just from habit write negative one for a charge. All right. Uh, let's look at the next guy, phosphorus. You ready? There's phosphorus. Who's the nearest noble gas to phosphorus, and what will he have to do to become like him? Argon. Everybody agree it's argon? And what does he need? Everybody agree he needs three? You see it? Make sense? Okay. Let's do that. He's argon. Because if you are not here, you are gone. <laughs> and he would have to gain three electrons. If he gains three electrons, what would his charge be? Negative three. Everybody agree? Makes sense. He got three extra negative charge. He's got three extra negative charges. Now, we get to Emily's favorite, strontium, which, we, which she couldn't find a symbol for. Uh, let's see if we can figure out what strontium does. Strontium is on the opposite side of the periodic table. So I've zoomed in over here, and he's down there. See him? Okay. There's strontium. Now, the thing is, do you think strontium is going to be able, he's only in group two. You think he's going to be able to become like uh, the nearest noble gas to him is going to be in the same row way over here? Is that where you're going to go? You're going to go all the way over here to xenon? No, because it turns out strontium can lose an electron. A couple of, how many do you need to lose to become like krypton? Just two. It's going to be easier for strontium to just give up two electrons to become like his nearest noble gas, which would be, um, what did we say it was? Krypton? All right, so back, back, there we go. So strontium's nearest noble gas is krypton, and he would have to lose two electrons to become like krypton. Now, if he loses these electrons, what will his charge be? Are you sure? You're not only sure, you're positive, too. <laughs> positive two, T-O-O, T-W-O. Yes. Okay. Gallium. Take a look at gallium. Look where he is. Uh, gallium would probably be the previous one, yeah. Oh, there he is. Okay. Now, gallium, you might think to yourself, gallium is got, he's, you're looking at just the total number of electrons, you might be confused and say, well, the closer one's going to be krypton, because he's got 36, he's got 31. But remember, we're only dealing with outer shell electrons. How many outer shell electrons does gallium have? Three. He's in group three, correct? That's all he needs to lose to become like Argon. I said, well, doesn't he need to lose all these other electrons to become like Argon? Because Argon has 18, and he's got 31. The answer is no. Because these other electrons that are in here, where are they? They're where? In an inner D sublevel. The three Ds filling here, see? So he only has this 4P here and then 4S electrons. He loses those. He drops down to being like Argon. So the nearest noble gas to gallium is Argon. And he's going to want to lose three to become like him. Okay? That's important. You understand. It's not about how many total electrons it has, but rather about how many it wants to lose in the outer shell or gain in the outer shell. If he loses three, what will he be? Positive three. All right. Now, a couple of other ones I'm doing here for a reason. You might think to yourself, okay, I got this. All right, but there's going to be a couple of little trick ones here. Watch. Let's look at germanium. Look where he is. Okay, there he is right there. A germanium, okay, he's, he's right in the middle, isn't he? What group is he in? He's in group four, isn't he? Right? He 
which way do you pick? Well, the thing is, it depends. He can do both. He can gain four, or he can lose four and become like Argon. So he can gain four and become like Krypton, or he can lose four and become like Argon. So Argon and Krypton are about equidistant apart, you might think to yourself. And so they're the nearest noble gas. In this case, you have both Argon and Krypton. Both. <laughs> to become like Argon, he would lose four electrons. What would he have to do to become like Krypton? Gain four. When I asked, I, I was very surprised after having done a couple of these like this, and I give me a paper, people ask me, well, do you want us to put both down? Yes. I, if he's a guy in the middle like this, and he's not just any guy, not just in the middle either, but anybody bordering that line, which I'm going to show you in a second, they can go both ways, and I can have to put plus four or minus four. They can either lose or they can gain. They can either become like one noble gas or the other one depending on who's around them. If he's around a really strong non-metal who wants electrons bad, he will, that guy will rip them away from him. If he's around a better metal and he wants to accept electrons, he could do that to make a compound. All right, so let me show you the guys that do that. Watch. The guys that, oh, it's not on this one, but uh, it is on this one and on the one that's covered up today. Uh, that zigzag line there that goes from boron, aluminum, like this, this is the zigzag line. It's red on almost all the periodic tables, including the ones you guys have. That's smart. Um, hold on. Oh, boy. I'm going to have to erase that guy there. And uh, the line goes like this. You see it on the periodic table up there, right? All right. Anybody who borders that line, like germanium does, silicon, arsenic, there are exceptions. Aluminum is an exception. There are a couple of exceptions also down at the bottom. But as far as you're concerned for right now, if they border that line, border it, they will go either way. So let's get another guy like Arsenic who borders that line and see what he would have to do. I think Arsenic's next. Is that the last one I have there, Arsenic? Yeah. What would Arsenic have to do to become like uh, Krypton? What would he have to do? Gain three. Gain three. But to become like Argon, what would he have to do? Lose how many? Five, because look where arsenic is. He's in group five. See, if he's in group five, he's got to lose all five of those outer shell electrons to become like argon. So he could become argon or krypton as well. But to become like him, you'll have to. How does that work? It's really means more go lose. Well, um, argon or krypton. I knew it, even though I know I hit it. Hold on. He could become like Argon or Krypton, and so he would either gain three or lose five, okay? Which means his charge could be what? And what are two possible charges be here? Plus Minus three or plus five. Y'all got that? Right? If he's gaining... If he's losing uh, five, he's going to be plus five. If he's gaining three, he's going to be minus three. Make sense? No. Well, yes, it does. Uh, look, I, 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 the way you know, it's, it's not like, um, you know, things aren't always perfect. Uh, the atoms that I just showed you, Emily, as I just showed you, you can predict guys who are going to do this by where they are at the periodic table. So, wait. Uh, if I'm looking, I, I know who's going to do it because of the zigzag line. These guys are called metalloids. Anybody bordering this line is going to do that. So if you have a guy back here who's in, um, way up here, I should say like tellurium, who's in group six, if he can do two things, what are the two things he's going to do? Gain two or lose how many? Six. This guy here would either gain three or lose five, all right? But only the ones that border the line, okay? And actually, like I said, there are exceptions to that. For example, aluminum is a metal. He doesn't go both ways. But there are guys who, and then there's some other books down here that do too. What? Yeah, I was told to come back and see what we did. It looks just as lame as this morning. 
Because you missed it, but you have to come when I have the full garb on. Looks like you're already dressed up. I don't. I have my, I have, I have, uh, my stable, my wig. Okay. Let's I'll see it when I see it. Maybe I'll be back next period. Me, well, it uh, won't be next period. They have a double. Maybe double? Last time I'll probably do it be eighth period. Maybe they'll stop by. Come by. If you're lucky. If I'm lucky. If I'm lucky, Cole will stop by. It's, it's a treat when I come by. It is. It's a trick, actually. A treat. <laughs> a trick or treat. Get it? Okay. All right. So that's how you will know what to do with these. Um, you look for, uh, and the homework, and by the way, it's not really, uh, it's, it's going to be classwork. You're going to hand this in at the end of the period. I'm going to have you. This went over the, um, uh, how we make ions, right? Now I want to talk to you about, look here, look here. Now I want to talk to you about how you can actually tell the size of the ions. I mean, everything else has been about a trend in the periodic table. This is another trend I can use in the periodic table. Or, or I could talk about whether the items are going to get bigger or smaller when you make an ion. And it, Completely makes sense. All right, you're not going to get this wrong. It's not like this is a trick. Um, perhaps the second reasoning isn't isn't as uh, obvious, but the uh, first one is to make an ion. You know what you got to do. What do you have to do? You have to either add or take away an electron, right? Well, if you make a positive ion, we call that a cation. No, not that. But it is pronounced that way, though. It's not cation, which I get people calling that all the time. It's not cation. Just like you're not using crucible thongs, you're using crucible tongs. <laughs> and this is not a cation, and it's not a bure, it's a burette. But we, we, you haven't used those yet, though, so you know what I'm talking about. Um, anyway, um, it's a cation, and uh, it comes from cathode. You've heard of a cathode and anode? Yeah. Okay, so for a battery like positive or negative. So the cation, a positive ion, must have done what with its electrons? Lost one, right? If he lost electrons, what do you think happened to the size of that atom after he does that? He got small. He got small. You know? And it's not just because he lost an electron. It's because that electron that he lost was in the outer shell. He didn't just lose an electron. He lost an entire energy level, didn't he? And the definition of energy level is how the distance from the nucleus. So, an ion, a positive ion, is going to be smaller than the atom from which it was formed. Because when it loses those electrons, it drops to a completely lower energy level. We've been predicting that on that sheet you just did, and yesterday, and in the last class we just did. So think of it this way. Oh, I could I use my wand. Look at Oh. Pretty cool, huh? If I have an atom. I'm using the back of the wand so I don't accidentally cast a spell. Don't draw this. Just look. Say I have a guy like this. And he's got one electron in the outer shell. He's in group one. If he, by the way, who is that? Who would that be? How many energy levels do he have? Three. Three. One electron in the outer shell? Potassium. No. No. So third row down, right? And uh, one electron in the outer shell. So if he loses that electron, watch what happens. He doesn't just lose a, an electron. He loses an entire energy level. I mean, I would have to, uh, I mean. Like that. Okay? So he obviously, go, huh, he hasn't come that small. Yeah, kind of. This one would still be there. So he's, he becomes a much he becomes much smaller than he, what he was before. Okay? Um, and as you can see from this little chart here, that's exactly what happens. This, the orange ones, are pumpkins. The orange ones are the atoms. The green are the ions after that atom forms. Now, you learned just yesterday how to predict the charge of those ions. Magnesium, for example, being in the second group, will want to be plus two, right? So then we want to be plus one. But in every case, the positive ions who've lost electrons are much smaller. These green ions are much smaller than the atom from which they came. Okay? Very simple. Now, the negative ones, the anions, cathode, anode, anions, cations, rare. Get that cat out of here. 
the anions, which are negatively charged, it doesn't make quite as much sense. I have to explain it a little bit more than I do the uh, positive ions. Think about this. You might say to yourself, well, sure, it makes sense if I add electrons and it's going to get bigger. Well, technically, when you add an electron in there, you're not adding an energy level, are you? You're just filling one up. You're just finishing that energy level. He wanted to get there, and you gave him one or two or three electrons that needed to get there. Why does the atom get so much bigger if you're just filling up the same energy level, which is the definition of which is uh, the average distance from the nucleus? Well, it has to do with the fact that you're adding an electron without adding a corresponding proton. So now, you don't have any positive charge that's balancing that out in the nucleus, pulling him in, and you've added an extra negative charge around a bunch of other negative charges in that cloud. What do like charges do? They repel. And so the whole thing swells up. Okay? The ion is larger than the atom because the extra electrons cause more repulsion in the uh, cloud, the electron cloud going around the nucleus. You got an extra guy in there without a proton to help him out, to pull him in, keep him in line. And as you'll see with the chart, I, I've zoomed in on the uh, right-hand side, which, by the way, that's where you'd expect to see all the negative ions, wouldn't you, on the right-hand side of the periodic table, which here they are. In this case, the yellow ones are the original atom, the brown ones, that's pretty ugly color brown or whatever that is, I don't even know what you call that. Those are the ions from which uh, the atom formed. And so when I add electrons to this guy or that guy, he gets a lot bigger because there's no positive charge balancing him out. All right. Now, that's all the notes I had for today because there's only one more day of notes due tomorrow on your single period. Um, and I'll get that in easily. I want you to do a worksheet.